Deuteronomy 26. Finally, we are back to a normal chapter in the Bible where it's all about worshiping God and giving God whatever he wants and talking about how awesome God is. Which just shows you why this is the worst memoir ever written. Great ones are written by people who observe the world around them and make very nuanced, thoughtful perceptions about their place in it. The Bible is just an egomaniac celebrating himself with commentary by his fan club. It's not the book you would ever want to take advice from. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you, and put them in a basket. Then. Go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name, and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Usually, the people who move into a new place are the ones who receive gifts. They're not supposed to be the ones scraping up some of their possessions to give away. It's also a very vague request. Take some of the first fruits. How much? Which kind? That matters. You want my old plums? Fine. But you will have to pry my kiwis from my cold, dead hands. It sounds like we're putting these gifts in a basket. Giving it to a priest who puts it in front of the altar, and then we all just sit there and wait, because no one's gonna eat it. We're all just gonna watch this good food go to waste. Sure, we could give it to the poor and hungry, but God just wants to show you he's powerful. It's all a game to him. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there, and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us, and made us suffer, subjecting us to harsh labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us a land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. Then you and the Levites and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. Who needs to hear this speech? Who's the audience? There's literally no one in the room who hasn't heard all this like a hundred times. This is truly cultish behavior. Constantly telling people who already agree with you about God how awesome God is. Because the consequences of not doing it are unimaginable. In fact, this passage makes it sound like God peacefully gave them this land flowing with milk and honey. There's no mention of all the genocides and murders that were required for the Israelites to finally take control of the land. Did you notice that this section said you should place the basket before the Lord, when just seconds ago we were told the priest should take your basket and set it down in front of the altar? Which is it? We can't follow the rules when God keeps changing them. Respect precedence. When you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year, the year of the tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Then say to the Lord your God, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and have given it to the Levite, the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all you commanded. I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. I have not eaten any of the sacred portion while I was in mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor have I offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed the Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, 
and bless your people, Israel, and the land you have given us, as you promised on oath to our ancestors, a land flowing with milk and honey. It's very kind of the Israelites to set aside 10% of their fruits once every three years to give to the minority groups and the people God doesn't care about. That's supposed to atone for everything. I don't know about you, but handing me some figs every three years isn't going to change the fact that I despise you. The Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws. Carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. You have declared this day that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in obedience to Him, that you will keep His decrees, commands, and laws, that you will listen to Him. And the Lord has declared this day that you are His people, His treasured possession as He promised, and that you are to keep all His commands. He has declared that He will set you in praise, fame, and honor, high above all the nations He has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God as He promised. Was there a day when we weren't declaring obedience to God and promising to obey Him? I must have missed that. There was nothing in this chapter we haven't covered in every other chapter. It's redundant. It's padding. It's pointless. And it distracts from the truly insane stuff we just heard in the previous chapter. Like the lady who grabs a man by his balls. Don't pretend you forgot about that. Can we find out what happened to that guy?